So I've been having like a conundrum, I guess, within myself where I've been wondering like, why are sneakers feeling so boring all of a sudden? I'm not sure if it's just the year, maybe there hasn't been a lot of good releases or something, but something just feels off. Whether it be on Twitter or Instagram or on YouTube, I really just don't feel like the excitement or like genuine excitement for sneakers that we used to feel like a couple years ago. Something feels off and something feels a little bit different, which is why I wanted to explore the idea of why do sneakers get boring? And it should be a really enlightening experience too, because when I was reading through this, it really was like eye-opening, I guess, where I was like, this makes a lot of sense, you know? So we'll be getting into all of that real quick, but before I do, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, Rose Gold and Black. And Rose Gold and Black is my go-to jewelry company, guys. Like, they have so much great jewelry on there. And one of the reasons why I continue to stay with Rose Gold and Black and why I keep going back to them as a consumer is because they continue to innovate in the jewelry market, which is really good, man, because they're one of the few companies that are out there that really is like supporting like men's jewelry, but also like keeping it affordable as well. I don't wanna be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on jewelry, and that's what RGNB provides guys quality jewelry for an affordable price right now when you guys use that link in the description to head to the website you will get 40 percent off and also a free complimentary bracelet or necklace with your purchase so make sure you guys check that out today guys very very good prices getting even better with 40 percent off and giving you free jewelry it doesn't get better than that check them out today okay and so now we can get into this topic guys uh why do sneakers get boring and why does fashion get boring in general and what i stumbled upon was something called the fashion cycle. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of this before, but usually there's a saying where fashion is cyclical or what that means is like something that was in style like in the 60s eventually will come back into style like a couple years down the road. Or in this case, what I've been finding out is usually a fashion cycle lasts 20 to 30 years. And that got me thinking like, is there a sneaker life cycle as well? Where sneakers that were super hyped in the past kind of died out and then came back and stuff. And is that time frame like the same thing as like regular fashion with clothing and stuff or is it a bit shorter? And so I did a little bit of research and we can get into this. I'll put it up on the screen over here. And so stage one is called intro. And this one basically says the introduction stage is when the new style first enters the fashion world. The style is usually only available in small quantities from a handful of different designers or retailers, often at a high price. And when we think about it in sneakers, right, that's exactly like what Travis Scott does with his shoes. He wears it, doesn't talk about it at all, just has it casually in a picture. And then everybody gets into speculation. They could do a close up of his shoe and like, oh, check out this new Jordan one Travis Scott design. This looks like a fragment colorway. Maybe it's a collaboration with fragment, you know? And then people start speculating it gets trending on Twitter Instagram on YouTube and stuff and that's really how hype grows and so that's the introduction stage and I really want to focus on one specific shoe that I've seen like entirely go in a cycle and seen it firsthand and that's some Nike SB Dunk and when you guys think back about like the intro for the Nike SB Dunk this was back in 2002 that was like I think the orange box series the first series of SBs that came out and this is literally at the height of like skateboarding right X Games and stuff was popping off everybody was watching over there Tony Hawk video games all of that good stuff and so Nike capitalized with the Nike SB Dunk. And they did exactly what they said in that intro for the fashion cycle by giving certain people limited run sneakers like Danny Supa, Reese Forbes, people like that, skaters back in the day. And that's what started creating that hype. The increase stage, also known as the fashion acceptance stage, is when the new fashion cycle begins gaining momentum and traction in the fashion industry, officially receiving the coveted trend label. During the increase stage, more fashion leaders and trendsetters wear outfits that incorporate the idea from social media influencers to celebrities, increasing consumer demand. In response to this, more retail stores begin to carry the trend. And now we can relate it back to Nike SB Dunks. In 2003 to 2004, I would say that's when it started really picking up steam and hitting that increase in the fashion cycle. Because back in those days, I was like 13 or 14, I believe. And that's literally when I started seeing like more people wearing Nike SB Dunks. It wasn't just like the skaters and stuff on TV. There was actually like everyday people in my classes and stuff having these cool shoes. But it wasn't to the point where like everybody had them, you know? It was something still like kind of niche. It was more for like the skaters group or you know the fashion conscious people and stuff or people with more money not really for the masses just yet in the peak stage the trend has reached full saturation in the general public and many everyday consumers begin wearing the trend most retailers will have identified and replicated the trend and it will be available through mass production at a wide variety of price levels especially at lower prices and I would have to say that this era the peak was probably in 2008 to around 2011 2012 more like around the blue box era because that's when things became super mainstream for Nike SBs I think the Janowskis came out during that time too. And literally I had like friends who knew nothing about sneakers and stuff, myself included, knowing what Janowskis were. You know, they were very available. And this is really where Nike was catering to the masses rather than 
to the skating community where they first started you know it wasn't like some kind of niche thing anymore it became super mainstream because there was just so much product and there wasn't an emphasis on like exclusivity anymore then in stage four of the fashion cycle it's called the decline stage and in this stage the trend will have become oversaturated in the market and during this period of time the trend's intense popularity will begin to turn off consumers who want their outfits to feel fashion forward and unique rather than mainstream and so this was more in like the 2012 2013 2014 era where it was the teal box series and a lot of people were fed up with nike sbs at this point where they're just like eh, i don't really want to wear these anymore people were trying to find something new and when you guys think about that timeline right 2014 ish that's right around when Kanye was about to hit the scene with his Yeezys in 2015. Because Nike SBs were so ingrained in culture before where people loved them so much, sneakerheads will tell you, like, even if they're not into skateboarding, Nike SB dunks were a big, big thing back in the day. No matter what, if you weren't into skateboarding, you would still know what a Nike SB was. The colorways were iconic, the collabs were iconic. It really helped the sneaker culture go from, like, just this, like, thing where basketball players and stuff were in the shoes, skateboarders were in the shoes, to people who didn't care about basketball or skating finally wearing these products, you know? like it was just fashion at this point and so finally we get to the last stage in the fashion cycle which is the obsolescence stage guys basically everything is obsolete once a trend has reached the end of its fashion cycle it is considered outdated and out of fashion by mainstream fashion wearers who have moved on to newer trends in introduction or increased stages so literally like i was saying nike sbs kind of died around 2014 2015 it was like really like at the end of like their peak periods and stuff that's when the yeezy hype exploded and things started going up again into stage one and stage two of the fashion cycle so when we go back and like kind of summarize everything 2002 is when the hype started for Nike SB Dunks. And during the fashion cycle, it probably ended around 2014 or 2015 to the obsolescent stage. So we can kind of consider that like 12 to 13 years was the life cycle of the Nike SB Dunk. 2019, 2020, so about five, six years later, that's when Nike SBs are back in full force again and we're seeing like the resurgence in this fashion trend. We can kind of see the same thing with the Yeezy market going on, right? So Yeezy started in 2015, Moon Rocks, Pirate Blacks, all of that good stuff. And now when we're in 2021, five years later, we're kind of in this peak stage where Yeezys are accessible everybody's wearing them it's not hard to get anymore if you guys want a pair of Yeezys you probably have like a 30% chance to get it on confirmed app it's relatively high and even if you guys want to buy it on the aftermarket it's only like 20 or 30 dollars over retail and you guys know like you don't even need to be a sneakerhead to be into Yeezys anymore like aunties and uncles and stuff wear Yeezys which is just so weird to me because before it was like super hype now it's like this uncle is wearing it you know that's kind of strange so that's how you know something has peaked and so I think over the next couple years for Yeezys we're starting to see like a decline where people are just getting kind of over it and we're already starting to feel that it feels like to me but i do honestly think like nike sbs and with everything else there will be resurgence again so that's why it's important to like know these cycles and stuff because if you guys know these cycles will happen then you guys kind of be ahead of the game buy things up when they're cheaper resell them if you guys want or just keep them so you guys might have the next what the dunk sb you know in the future where it's like eight thousand dollars all of a sudden so i really hope you guys found this video like enlightening because when i read this thing from like masterclass.com i was really like just like blown away i was like this makes so much sense now when i'm thinking about shoes in general but i do want to hear you guys' take like do you guys think that like the fashion timeline for sneakers is a little bit different 10 to 13 years is probably like the regular life cycle of a shoe we saw this with the nike sb and it kind of feels like a similar path with the yeezy as well but you guys might have other examples from like you know back in the day like in the 80s or the 90s or something please comment that down below so we can kind of see another cycle of shoe if you guys did enjoy this video don't forget to hit the like button before you guys leave and as always guys until next time stay humble stay blessed take care and i will see you on the next episode aloha shoots